Welcome back to a new video. This lecture is going to be about long short term memory deep learning algorithm. This video is going to be one of the videos that I create for my time series analysis playlist. You can just reach to that playlist from the cards of this video. Let's start coding. Again, we are going to start by creating our data, but firstly, I'm going to do the imports because I want to import the torch with you. I'm going to import pandas as pd. I'm going to import numpy as mp. Then I'm going to import torch. I'm going to import torch.neural network as neural network. And I'm going to say from torch.autogradient import variable. And also I'm going to import the matplotlib.pyplot as plt like this. And then I'm just going to make a copy paste in here for the data creation. So our data is ready. We can just say data.head for checking it and we have date, linear value, seasonal factor and random noise in our data. Great. So before coding the long short term memory algorithm, let's firstly talk about it. Long short term memory LSTM is a type of recurrent neural network architecture designed to address the vanishing gradient problem in traditional RNNs, making it particularly effective for learning long range dependencies in sequential data. LSTMs have a unique cell state that acts as a memory unit, allowing them to capture and retain information over extended periods. Comprising input, forget and output gates, LSTMs regulate the flow of information into, out of and within the cell state. This gating mechanism enables LSTMs to selectively update, forget or output information, facilitating the learning of incorrect patterns in the time series and sequential data. With the ability to handle dependencies over different time scales, LSTMs are widely employed in diverse applications such as natural language processing, speech recognition, and just like in our case, time series prediction. So at the first step, what I'm going to do is I will say train data, and it's going to be data linear values column we have in here. We will say dot values dot reshape minus one and one. Then we are going to normalize the data. I will say from scikit-learn dot preprocessing import min max scalar. And then we are going to set scalar like min max scalar, let's say feature range. It's this by default, but you can also type this. And then I'm going to say train data normalized. And it's going to be scalar dot fit transform train data. Actually, there is a typo at the scalar. So let me quickly fix that a in here and we will delete that one. Great. So I can just call train data normalized and we can see we have values between minus one and one. So great. Okay. Now we are going to turn our data into a PyTorch tensor. So for turning our data into PyTorch tensor, I'm going to say something like train data normalized and it's going to be torch that float tensor then I will give train data normalized and at the end I'm going to say view and I will give minus one in here. Actually it's train data normalized. Now it's fixed. Great. Uh, now our, I'm just going to say type. Actually I need to write train in here too. Then I'm just going to say train data normalized and we are going to say that it's torch.tensor. Great. So after that I'm going to define our long short term memory model. I will say class and I will say long short term memory. I will say neural network that module after that. And then I'm going to define in it. I'm going to say self input size one hidden layer size hundred and output size one. After that, we will say super then in it like this actually let me take this like that and then we will say self dot hidden layer size is going to be equal to the hidden layer size then we will say self lstm is going to be nail network dot lstm we will say input size and hidden layer size then we will say self dot linear is going to be nail network dot linear we will say hidden layer size, then we will set output size. 
Okay, now it's time to define the forward method. We will say define forward and we will say self and input sequence. In here, we are going to say LSTM out is going to be, actually we need to also set it like this and it needs to be self.lstm we will say input sequence.view length of the input sequence and then we will say one and minus one so after that we will also say predictions is going to be equal to self.linear stm out dot view length of the input sequence again and again we will say minus one like this Great, so at the last step of the forward method, we will say return predictions minus one, like this. Great, so it's ready. So now with this created, what we can do is we are go just going to set the model as LSTM. And then I'm just going to define the loss function. It's going to be like loss function is going to be nail network dot mean squared error loss. And I'm just going to set the optimizer like torch.optimizer.adam. We are going to use Adam optimizer. I will give model.parameters. And I'm going to set the learning late like this to 0. Point, let's say 001. So okay, great. We prepared our data set and set up long short term memory model. Great. Now we are going to train the model make predictions and evaluate its performance. So let's keep on going. I'm going to create a function like define create in out sequences and it's going to take input data and input sequence length. So after that we will say in out sequence is going to be empty list and what we are going to do next is I will set something like L and it's going to be the length of the input data. And then I'm going to say for index in range le and after L we will say minus input sequence length. So next we will say train sequence and it's going to be equal to the input data. Secure length in here, then we will say train label is going to be input data index plus input sequence length index plus input sequence length plus one. And then we will say in out sequence dot append and we will give train sequence and train label. And at the last step, we will say return in out sequence. Great. So after defining this function, I will set epochs like let's say 400. And I'm going to set something like all losses for creating a plot with this. It's going to be an empty list like that. And then I will say it's going to be training loop right now. So I will say for epoch in range epochs for sequence labels in create in our sequences train data normalized we created and we will set input sequence length as 5 then i'm going to say optimizer 0 gradient y predictions is going to be model sequence like this and then i will say single loss is going to be loss function y pred and labels and i'm going to say single loss dot backward and i will say optimizer dot step so after that we can say at the first for loop not inside this one but in this one we can say all losses dot append single loss dot item Great, so it's our training loop and we are training our model with 400 epochs right now. I will come again when this finishes. It took around a minute and now we can just visualize the loss over time. I'm going to say plt.plot and I will say all losses. We are going to visualize the loss with epochs. So x label is going to be epoch and y label 
is going to be loss and we are going to give it a title like training loss over epochs and I'm going to say plt.show at the end of this so here is our loss over epochs great so after that we are going to make predictions on our data but firstly I want to say that you can see that the loss is decreasing over epochs great so before making predictions I just want to do something like plt.plot and I'm going to plot our data let me code again here we have date and linear values I will just say data.index and data linear values I'm going to give it an x label like values and y label like y label is going to be values and x label is going to be date and we will say plt.show just for seeing the data now we are going to make predictions on this data I'm going to say 50 which means that we are going to predict the next 50 days 50 points so I'm going to set something like future and it's going to be 50 then I will say model.evaluation mode and then I will say for index in range future with torch that no gradients sequence is going to be train data normalized minus 5 and I will say for in range future y pred is going to be model sequence and sequence is going to be torch.cat we will say sequence y predictions dot view minus one so here it is great we trained our model we made predictions it's time to visualize these predictions remember that our data is random so there is a probability that our predictions is going to be random too but I think it's going to fit well but there is a small probability that our predictions that can't be that good it can be caused because of the layers or the epoch size it can be caused for anything I'm just going to say predicted values and it's going to be scalar dot inverse transform numpy dot array sequence and I will say reshape minus one and one after that I'm going to plot the original data linear values and I'm going to give, give it a label like original values and I'm going to plot the predictions like plot PD date range start is going to be 2022 0801 and we will say period is going to be future and this parenthesis needs to be at the end we will also set frequency daily now we can put that parenthesis and we will say predicted values minus feature and then we are going to set this a label like predictions great so we can give it a x label like date y label like linear values title like long short term memory model predictions and I'm just going to give it a legend to I will put legend on and now I will say plt.show at the end great so here is our predictions our data is random maybe if I just run all that it's going to change this model and the data so you can just change the epoch size and the other things for getting better or different predictions like it can be anything on shopping trends airline passengers which I think is going to be the last part of this course and it, it can be effective on anything but you can change the layers you can change the epoch size for getting different results like I'm just going to change them quickly after making this rerun and I will show you how it's going to change so I just press the run all button again so it's going to create a random data again and it's going to give us another plot in here when it runs I'm going to be in here 
So after rerunning all of the cells, we get a different predictions. As you can see, if I just press run over again, it's going to give me a different thing. I'm just going to show the result one more time for you to show you how it can be changed since we are using random values for this tutorial. But long short term memory is a great way of forecasting time series data. So here is our new result. You can see it's more accurate and great. So that was all for the coding part. Thanks for watching the video. I'm sharing two or three new videos every week about data science and Python programming. You can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. This was one of the lectures of time series analysis playlist. You can watch the others for learning more. I'm going to add the playlist link in the cards of this video or in the description. See you in the next tutorial.